long lines, congestion. Senator Grace Poe rides the MRT during rush hour. Philippine peacekeepers face Syrian rebels in a standoff. And the Moro Islamic Liberation Front condemns ISIS. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. With no media coverage, Senator Grace Poe takes the MRT3 train Friday during rush hour. The senator says she wanted to be a passenger and experience the MRT firsthand. She took the train ride to prepare for a hearing on the MRT3 accident that injured 36 people August 13th. Poe stood in line for around 40 minutes at the North Avenue station at 8.20 a.m. Poe says she experienced firsthand the long lines, crowds, and malfunctioning escalators and turnstiles. Poe describes the ride as, in her words, pleasant, but says the coach was full in some stations. She later finds out MRT3 officials got wind of her surprise visit and tried to prevent passengers from entering the train she was riding. She arrives at the Taft station, the site of the accident, almost two hours later. At the Taft station, Poe notes the elevators weren't working, making it difficult for persons with disabilities. Poe says the MRT is not hopeless and encourages other government officials to take the train. Passengers told her the MRT remains their preferred mode of transport, despite its glitches. <coughs> 81 Filipino peacekeepers from the United Nations Disengagement Observer Force are in a standoff with Syrian rebels in the Golan Heights. This comes as the peacekeepers refuse to surrender their firearms to rebels from Al-Qaeda affiliate Al-Nusra. This incident happens just days after the Philippines finalized plans to pull out its troops given the increasing security threats in the area. Their tour of duty ends October and no fresh troops will be deployed. Military spokesman Lieutenant Colonel Ramon Zagala says the Philippines is working closely with the UN to ensure the troops' safety. Zagala adds, we will not give in. Peacekeeping Operations Chief Colonel Roberto Ancan assures the public the troops deployed are prepared. Our uh, soldiers there are, uh, are uh, well trained and uh, they are well experienced and uh, they know the risks that they uh, have to face. And uh, as soldiers, um, we've been well trained and uh, well prepared, uh, also professional, so it's just part of the job. The UN Security Council demands the unconditional and immediate release of all the detained peacekeepers. About 43 peacekeepers from Fiji are also held hostage following their surrender. The Moro Islamic Liberation Front, or the MILF, condemns extremist jihadis, ISIS, the Islamic State of Syria and Iraq. The MILF vows to stop the spread of what it called the ISIS virus in the Philippines. The largest Muslim rebel group of the Philippines says it condemns barbarism and savagery, whether done by other groups such as ISIS or its own members. The MILF adds its power, moderating line, and influence hinders the birth of a strong radical group in the southern Philippine island of Mindanao. After decades of armed rebellion, the MILF signed a peace agreement with the Philippine government in March to create an autonomous Muslim region. State Weather Bureau Pagasa says a low-pressure area spotted in Palawan. Pagasa's latest bulletin Friday says as of 4 p.m., the LPA is at 140 kilometers north of Puerto Princesa City. Luzon and western Visayas will have cloudy skies with light to moderate rain showers and thunderstorms on Saturday. The rest of the country will be partly cloudy to cloudy with isolated rain showers or thunderstorms, most in the afternoon or evening. Check out Rappler's Project Agos Microsite, a one-stop shop to help the public prepare better for disasters. Project Agos aims to raise awareness about climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction and management. You can see what to do before, during, and after natural disasters like floods and earthquakes. Visit www.rappler.com slash Project Agos. More airlines suspend flights to the nations at the center of the West African Ebola outbreak. So far, Air France, British Airways, and Brussels Airlines have either completely suspended or significantly limited their flights to Sierra Leone, Guinea, Liberia, and Nigeria. Only Royal Air Morocco retained its normal flight schedule. It flies once a day to Conakir in Guinea and every other day on average to Monrovia in Liberia and Freetown in Sierra Leone. This move leaves the African nations more isolated. It also makes it more difficult for the United Nations to help address the epidemic. 
More than 1,400 people have died since the Ebola epidemic erupted in early 2014. After a series of seismic activities, Iceland's largest volcano, Bardarbunka, erupts Friday. Iceland calls for a red alert over the eruption, imposing a ban on air traffic around the country's largest volcanic system. Iceland's Meteorological Institute says no volcanic ash has been detected by the radar system yet. There's also a minor earthquake caused by the eruption, but there's no significant explosive activity. A major explosion at Bandarbuga Volcano, which is located under Europe's largest glacier, could signal a replay of a global travel chaos triggered when a massive ash cloud cloaked Europe due to another Icelandic peaks eruption four years ago. Let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number seven, a criminal court in Bangkok dismisses charges against former Thailand Prime Minister Abhisit Vijayjiva and his ex-deputy Sutep Thugsaban. The court says it has no jurisdiction to hear cases on acts committed by public officials. Prosecutors accused Abhisit and Sutep of issuing orders that resulted in murder. Scores of demonstrators died under Abhisit's government in street clashes. Both suspects deny the charges. And at number nine, microblogging site Twitter makes its analytics dashboard available to all users with public accounts and good standing. The feature used to be available only to advertisers and verified users. The accounts have to be at least 14 days active and primarily tweet in English, French, Japanese, or Spanish. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. Twitter on Friday announces plans to open an office in Indonesia in the coming months as it seeks to boost revenues in the social media addicted nation. Twitter's Adam Bain, <coughs> excuse me. Twitter's Adam Bain says opening shop in Jakarta is significant because Indonesia loves Twitter and Twitter loves Indonesia. Several market monitors declare Jakarta the world's most active city of tweeters. Indonesia is a major market for Twitter. It is the world's fourth most populous country with about 250 million people and smartphone sales are surging. Millions access the internet primarily through smartphones and tablets, and surveys show social media is the primary reason for using mobile devices. Tweets about Indonesia's presidential election alone reached about 95 million tweets from January 1 until Election Day on July 9th. Bain says he's hopeful Indonesia's incoming government would be welcoming, pointing to President-elect Joko Widodo or Jokowi's avid use of Twitter as a positive sign. Before Jokowi's run for president, he was elected Jakarta governor in 2012, a victory largely attributed to social media. Jokowi built a wildly popular online profile as a man of the people and die-hard heavy metal fan. Twitter's Jakarta office will be its sixth in the region, following setups in Tokyo, Mumbai, Sydney, Singapore, and Seoul. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page. That crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have affected our readers and viewers the most emotionally. These 10 stories have gotten the most number of votes on their mood meter. If you take a look today, um, you see the 81 Filipino peacekeepers in standoff with Syrian rebels, 17% afraid, but 63% inspired perhaps because of the, the assurance that they will be okay by President Aquino. Uh, we have Miriam, I might just run for president, 68% happy. That green bringing out the story that's gotten the most number of votes, our top story today. Senator Grace Poe rides MRT3, says it's not a hopeless situation. 12% inspired, 73% happy. That green bringing out the mood of the day. It's Friday and today most people are happy. That is Rappler's newscast for today, Friday, August 29th, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. Remember, tomorrow begins today.